Can you have it over there, Anna? I got it. So I, Anna, it looks like really like gauzy, like Vaseline filter. Like, doesn't it no, look like, no, like angelic? <laughs> I, I didn't do there? anything. Is it yeah, the sure. Oh, you know what it is? Yeah. Maybe it's the light because it's on the bright light instead of the warm light. Got it. No, wait, no. Fix it up, Anna. Come on. That is that better? That's less that's like I look less like an angel and more like a devil. Yeah. We look like closer you're, to the truth. When you're more like me. I just to want to give you guys an update. I did copy and paste that guy's question. I just forgot that I had done it. So I just want you to know that I scrolled back through Twitter for like four days, which is a lot of freaking tweets to go through. Yeah. Found it. And then I was like, oh, I already copied and pasted that. So I, I actually am on top of things. You just, I just didn't, didn't know I just didn't remember that I was on top of things. Yeah, you forgot that you were on top of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, when you say copy and paste, uh, people think I'm joking I, when I ask these I questions. highlight really the am. tweet that you okay. say. Uh, this right. is what I try to do. I don't always do it. If you say, if Anna Vicino reminds me, right. you will cover this on a Monday show is what you right. usually say. And that's, I, that's my do. trigger to go copy paste into the note that I have. That's just, uh, it's just filled with hundreds and hundreds of questions. Most of them we'll probably never get to because there's too many questions. Most we of them we've already covered in past podcasts, but we still go over it because, you know, there's new people coming in all the time. Anna, we should just do a show. Remember how we wanted to do the longest podcast in the world years ago? <laughs> yeah. Like, and we wanted we to do about, that for our 1000th episode. Yeah. And we figured out you, we would have to do it for like 36 hours nonstop. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we should do that with all the copy and paste questions. Maybe we through. could. Yeah. Just knock them all out like that. I also have, I have, I'm sure you have this in your, D, in your Instagram DMS and in your Facebook DMS, just hundreds of requests for messages that I can't even get to. Oh uh, yeah. It's just impossible. It's most impossible. of them are legit questions. And then some of them are people who just hate us and want to tell us as such. And yeah. so I'm like, I can't go through this. My favorite one much. is I, I always know when, when they're coming with something bad, sometimes they do it right on Twitter or right on Instagram. Yeah. But they, they normally do this in the background more than they do it, you know, like it, to the open Twitter. Yeah. They'll come on and it, it usually starts like this. Hi, Vin, uh, big fan. <laughs> Love all of your products. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I have your pure vitamin club. I have your coffee. And, and, and you're going, oh, this sounds, this sounds pretty oh, good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and by the way, it's, nice. folks, it's like, uh, but I'm sorry to let you know, I uh -oh. can no longer support uh -oh. you or your company. Oh, they're mad. Yeah, yeah. So oh, first dear. they tell you that they, they're they all in, right? They, yeah. They're taking all of your products. I've lost, I've lost this much weight. Yeah. Love the things. But, but then you did this one thing you. that I can't abide by. So yeah, but we're done. We're done, Vin. You you said hydroxychloroquine may work, even though I don't think I've ever said that. I'm trying to think of something. I've, I'm trying to think of a real one that I've said, and they'll go, oh, 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 one of the big ones is, I don't like that the fact that you use the term Jesus H. Christ in your Twitter. Oh, I, I get I get a lot. Kind of I get a lot of people offended by language. And and, and I, I would venture to say, Vinny, if we were to put your DMs against my DMs, you would have a higher volume. But right. I bet I would have more people because I'm a woman who can't abide by the fact of the sailor language. Like they're very upset by it. And I'm always like, go fuck yourself. I don't care. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> I do not care. And I just because I'm a woman doesn't mean that I have to be like, I can never use swear words, but also to remember, I got that lady who freaked out on me about saying all is calm, all is bright. And then I, maybe I didn't bring it up on the air. Uh, it was, it was nutty on Twitter. Well, what did she do? I don't know. She was, I get the Christians very mad at me. Like you probably do. Well, and the well, ironic thing yeah, being I'm a daughter of a minister and I'm still, uh, I still am a Christian. So it's really funny that, and I never say that on the air because it does, it should be irrelevant. Who cares? No one, it's none of anybody's business what I am and what I practice. But like, you know, they say it's so the fucking dumb. Daughter. Yeah. Huh? The preacher's daughter was always easy. Always on time. They're always on time. They're but very I'll prompt. Yeah. Very prompt. Yep. Um, which is true. I don't like to be late. Although you're, you're the first person I've met who's more on time than I am. It's annoying. I, I'm death on time. I'm Vince Lombardi on time. Yeah. On time is late. Yeah. On time. You is and fifth. Andrea Anders are both very, very like ridiculously prompt. You're always uh, early. 15 minutes early is late for me. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, but I am also a huge fan of being on time. Being late is like saying fuck you to the world is what yeah. I heard when I was younger. And I don't want to say fuck you to the world unless you write me a nasty DM. Um, no, she was mad because I said all is calm, all is bright because they ate prime rib on Christmas dinner or something like that. It was so dumb. Like it was such a stretch of a thing. And then she was very upset that I co-opted the words all is calm, all is bright because that should be reserved for the baby Jesus. And I was like, you know what? Yeah, we're done. You know, saying, I'm sorry, I can't it help. It didn't matter. She broke up with me first. But, you know, the bottom line is, is when, I, I'm like, don't get outraged. Get outraged about kids going to sleep without homes. OK, don't get out, outraged because you know, I said all is calm. All is they're crazy people shooting up kids in school. Yeah, we, it's know, like me saying <laughs> Jesus H. Christ is not really the issue in the world today. No, no we it, have, we we have bigger problems. pearls to clutch, y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I, I remember one time this guy was like, uh, I've used all of your products religiously and this and I've been, I, and then he said, I've been using your nut butter for years. And I went, wait a minute. Uh, wait, hang on. Hang on. <laughs> when did this product come out? For years. It's been up, at that point, it had been out for like six months. Yeah. So I jotted his name down and uh, I called Andy. I said, Andy, uh, go, to, go to the nut butter and look up this guy. And, uh, this is very satisfying, by the way. So uh, he goes, yeah. I said, D you know, has he ever bought? And he goes, yeah, when we did the introductory thing, you know, like when we first did that thing, we did that long thing over the weekend. It was during COVID. We had Nina Tai shows and all these people. We did like this big Q&A thing for two days. This, this summit we called, you know, the something, something, summit. Yeah, the NSNG summit. I remember it was yeah. July we, of 2020 because it was when I was launching the very first marinara right. flavor and y'all were launching the packets of nut butters. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we, we did that whole thing and we pulled it off. He goes, yeah, yeah. I see an order from that guy right here. And I uh, went, OK, um, has he ever ordered anything from PVC? And Andy looked, he goes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right here. He, he got one one bottle off subscription you know, not a subscription of uh, ultra salt. Okay, so now I'm seeing a theme here. The guy's a runner or a cyclist or something, right? Right, right, right. So any coffee? Nope. Any subscriptions? Nope. Just ordered once like when, when we gave a big time promo and he goes, as a matter of fact, I'm looking at his promo on both things. It was promo. Right. And, you know, where, where we you know, so don't tell me that you're a big subscriber of my products, because I can go check, dude. And, you know, that's true. You know, not that that means anything and we don't want to lose customers. But don't say something that I can easily check. You well, know, I can't, I nobody can't. wants to lose customers. But I, I got I got a weird email a couple of weeks ago saying how much the person disliked spicy. And I wasn't sure if they were saying they disliked spices or the spicy marinara or if oh, they just don't the like spice spicy. The, I, I, I didn't know. Do what and you want I didn't wind up really, responding because really it was it was so vague. But I, I looked at the person because I thought maybe they hate the sauce, which I've never had anybody hate something. You know what I mean? Right. And so, and I looked them up and sure, I couldn't find anything on their email or anything. So I was like, I guess they were just telling me they don't prefer things that are spicy. But I was so confused because I was like, did something wrong happen? Like, I don't know. You know what I mean? I just get, so I, I've actually started to um, block <laughs> things. I've had to take off the contact me on my website, anavicino.com. I've taken off the contact me page. Um, if you guys need to find me, you can find me on the socials. You can come on the clubhouse on Mondays. Um, you can join either the Facebook groups. I had to take Facebook off my phone. Uh, it, and I want to focus my energy on helping the customers who need help with Eat Happy Kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> and I want to focus my energy on posting all the free recipes that I post at Substack and on my website. But I can't fielding these emails has been I didn't mean to go down this rabbit hole, but it, it's been no, but every now and then an energy got, suck for me. It. Like, no, Anna, every it's now and been then really getting to me. You know, we have to talk because it just <clears throat> I, I had a bunch of, you know, this morning was a heavy vegan morning. Right. It's so like, on the Twitter. They were coming. For you. Yeah. And it doesn't really bother me, but I, it, it, I'm forced with I try to leave them there as long as I can. But you know, it's the same spewing nonsense. And I'm like, you know what? I'm here trying to help people. And these people are just spewing lie after lie about how soybeans are saving the planet and not hurting <laughs> the planet. And it's like, oh, come on. Uh, you know, I'm just trying to help people here. You know, uh, yeah. just, just fucking stop. 
can you just stop for just a second? You know, I get do it. You ever have to take a break from Twitter and just not do it for a little while? Um, because sometimes it, it just gets here's the thing. I am realizing that as I get older, I do have a finite amount of energy to get the things done that I need to get done. So sometimes I have to have boundaries with myself, which is I cannot go on socials and engage as much as I used to if I still want to put the amount of content out that I'm putting out. If I want to have energy to talk to you, if I want to have energy to create a recipe and take a photo of it and get put all this stuff up and do all this content, I have to start to be more protective of my energy because I don't have I don't have the patience anymore. I admit that it get it, it annoys uh, no, I, me. I get, I get it. All right. I wrote you as you know, sometimes I will write a single note for the show. Yeah. Can you read what my note is right here? Cell phone. I wrote that word that you see all my notes. You never call me on the cell phone. So I, I wrote down cell phone because mm -hmm. that's, that's what I want to talk about today after I talk about the long way home. Um, because You're taking the long way home this summer. Boy, am I. Um, first, uh, I want to give an update. New Year's resolution um, uh, I, on day 159 of the year. Uh, one of my resolutions was to do an hour of aerobics per day. Now, I don't have to do an hour every day. I could do two hours one day and then skip the next day and that sort of thing. I do five hours one day and skip the next four or five. Days. You know, I could do it any way I want. Right. Uh, so as of right now, on day 159, I'm at 190 hours of aerobics for the year. Amazing. So, uh, you know, I, and by the way, jot it down every day is not a big deal. When you make a goal, you want to see, it, uh, of course, the boat. I've been working on a boat once a week. The boat is coming along, folks. If you guys want to see, it's actually looking like a, a, a kayak now. And uh, you, you can go check that out on my YouTube. I also, once a week, I put a little something on my Instagram that leads to my YouTube. So there's that. You guys can check that out. Uh, I will be missing a few weeks in a row because of a lot of travel that's coming up. Um, and it's all coming at one time. And last night, I um, I had a heart to heart with Don Coddington. And I told him, I said, I don't think I can go up to the blind camp. And he goes, dude, you've been talking about that. For, I when I know I, I just don't think I can. Sarah Whitney. Huh? Oh, the blind camp, blind camp up in upstate New York. Right. And he was like, dude, that's all you've been talking about. I'm like, I know. But, you know, Serena has to go home and, you know, she's got to go to England to take care yeah. of some family stuff. And she's yeah. going to be there for three weeks. Yeah. Which means. When she's coming back, she won't even be back. I would be leaving for the blind camp, you know, right. for three or four days. And there's no one here at the house. So that means we have to get who's going to, who's going to take Bonzo. Well, we need someone to watch Bonzo. So, you know, uh, you know, the, those the cops that we have that come stay at the house because. Well, number one, they're cops and they have guns and everything else, and that's good. Um, so they were available, so I, they're coming in. So I'm back on with doing that. So I started looking at that. Uh, I'm going to be traveling the last couple of days of, the, of this month. And. Then I'm going to come back. I'm going to be there for a few days. I'm going to come back here for a few days. So I'll get to see Serena for a couple of days. We'll be here together. And then I'm gone again. Yeah. So last night I started messing around to try to figure out how many miles I will be doing in under a three week period. What do you think? I'm, now, Anna, I'm, without trying to do the calculations, I'm, you know, I'm going up to Brockport, New York. And then back here. Mm -hmm. And then I'm leaving Virginia and I'm going to. That's going to be 350 miles round trip. Brockport. Wait, is it upstate New York? Yeah. 450 miles round trip. Okay, I'll, I'll give you one hint here. 450 miles one way. Oh, shit. That, that one's 900 round trip. You have no idea, D. No. Okay, so there's that. And then I go across country from here to um, Austin. Yeah. Uh, I go from Austin to Lone Pine, California. Yeah. Then I have to drop down into L.A. to do some business for a day. Yeah. And then I drive from L.A. to New Orleans. Mm -hmm. I have something going on down there. Funny business. 
And then uh, from you have there, a weird look on your face. Yeah. Is it just seeing your parents? You can just say that. No, I'm, I'm of course, I'm going to be down there. I'm going to spend it. I'm spending a day with them. And then it's my best friend's 60th birthday. And uh. he's he's invited me to go. He, he's taken a fishing camp down in the swamp somewhere. There's this fishing camp you can get where you can have you know several people come along. You get the camp for that week or whatever. I'm going to be down there for three days. That's fishing. awesome. And by fishing, I mean, probably drinking. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. yeah, this is my best friend from first grade. And I'm probably the only childhood friend that's coming to this deal. I think everyone else that's going to be there is going to be friends of his throughout his life. Right. So <clears throat> he and I, you know, Jim, we we went to first grade together. We're still good friends. And uh, so I'm going to do that. And then from there, I'm going to drive back here now. Round trip, Anna. 7,000 miles. How did you come up with that number? Just just asking. It feels right. Okay, Anna, it's so close to 7,000 miles, it's ridiculous. You really? Know? Yeah, it came to well, like 6,900 miles. Yeah. And by the way, which means that's just looking at the maps. That's not getting off here and going there. And uh, So, yeah, I'm going to be dropping 7,000 miles plus in the car in less than a three week period, which means, you know, aerobic time is going to be difficult during that time. So this is my question for you, because I'm going to sure. turn this into fitness because I only drove to South Pasadena and back on Saturday to do a demo at a grocery store. And by demo, I mean, I'm handing out sauce samples to people and talking to them about the things. Sure. Um, so that's what, Two and a half hour. I stopped in Burbank and I stopped well, depending to charge on the what car. time of day. It could be two and a half hours or 12 hours. That's true. <laughs> but I left early enough. So I stopped and charged the car in Oxnard, stopped in Burbank to pick up some things, go to Pasadena, do the demo, go to lunch, come back, stop at Thousand Oaks to charge the car. And I have never been more glad to have an electric car, number one, for the gas prices. And number two, because I got to get out of the car and walk around. Where are you guys on gas prices, Anna? Uh, he's six seventy five here, and then I saw it over seven dollars in LA. Yeah, I, I somewhere hit over ten dollars in LA. Someone put something on. I, I think, believe it. You know, I believe it. Probably Clark. down in like Silver Lake or like on the West Side or Malibu. Yeah. But I, I'm asking this because I was getting, and I love to drive, and I love road trips, and I was getting stiff and irritated in the car, and I even have the Tesla thing where it helps you drive. Not, I don't have the full autopilot, but it does help you drive. Right. But I was just getting antsy and ugh, I can't sit still. So I was really glad to get out of the car and walk around and do stuff. But what do you, can you do anything in the car? Like I was like, try, like, should I like do inner thigh squeezes or like squeeze my butt? Like I was like trying to figure out something to do because I didn't want to, I noticed my shoulders getting stiff. Anything as you to know, do? Yeah, as you know, I, I love to drive. I love to be on the open yeah. road. Um, I do not overly speed. Uh, you know, if the if the me neither because uh, that's how you get tickets. Well, you know, I use I, I keep a radar detector on because sometimes they'll give tickets just to give tickets. So whenever I know a cop is around, so if in other words, if the speed limit is seventy, <clears throat> I'll be at seventy five. You know, because that's basically that's what I do. It's basically the flow of traffic. If it's sixty five, usually everyone's going about seventy. You know, so whatever the flow of traffic is, and I'm really good about using the uh, cruise control. My car yeah. doesn't drive itself, but I love the new cruise controls because if you start gaining on a car too much, it kicks you back. Yeah, right? and it, but it still it, keeps you instead of cutting it off altogether. Right. It used to just cut you off. It keeps you. Yeah. I call it having the invisible rope to the car in front of you. It slows down. You slow down. It speeds up. It's pretty great. Yeah, I call I call it the invisible rope. But despite um, that, because usually if I don't do that, my foot's on the accelerator, my leg gets more tired. But now that we have the cruise control, it's good. But I still was like, oh, God, like even when we sit and do this podcast, I get very antsy and I want to. Right, right. Around. I noticed that you move around. Um, my, <laughs> I can't my, sit still. My thing is, you know, uh, you know, I have a little arthritis in my lower back. I still do squats and lunges and leg press and all that. And that's how I keep it mobile. Also doing rowing machine keeps it mobile. Everything I do keeps it mobile. But I'm very big on usually I don't stop until I need gas, right? 
Um, right. but as I get older, I have to pee more. So I'll pull, well. off, I'll pull off of a rest stop. And when I do a rest stop, I don't do a 20 minute walk around stop. If I pull off on a rest stop, I'll pee. And uh, then, uh, as you know, I keep the jump rope in my car. I've actually done videos on this. And people go, dude, come on. Do you actually really keep a jump rope in a car? Yes, I do. Uh, when you pull it, most most rest stops around the country, they all look exactly the same. And they all have a smooth bit of concrete, you know, in the form of sidewalks or something else. And no, I don't pull right in front of the place and, and do some kind of big show off thing because it would look weird. You know, I, I go off to the edge. I keep the doors. You know, I have two doors on one side of the car. I keep them open to kind of hide what I'm doing there. And I'll just pull the jump rope out and, and you know, just hit it for three to five minutes. And you would be shocked at what that does to your energy level. The thing I don't do when I drive is drink a ton of coffee. I will have coffee in a thermos with me all day long, but I'm not hammering coffee all day long. You know, I might pour like usually this is I, I, I usually take this mug with me. Right. I don't like the big tumbler full of coffee. And then you're not seeing how much you're drinking. I'll pour about halfway because I don't want it to slash, you know, just fall out of the cup. Sloshy slosh. Right. And, you know, every now and then I'll sip on a coffee or this or that. And um, as you know, I like it when it gets lukewarm, warm and cold. So I'm fine with that. Uh, sometimes because I have my little ice chest in the car with my cheese and, and all that kind of stuff and eggs and and whatever. Um, I will have a batch of cold coffee in there. I'll, I'll make my my toddy coffee maker from the house and I'll have that with me. And look, uh, you know, a concentration of that. That could last me a couple of weeks if I'm on the road, right? Yeah. You know, because you just have to put a little bit and then add water to it. So I can have iced coffee every now and then. So that's another thing I can do. People, you know, people who travel a lot, they're like, Vin, I'm doing NSNG. I need, I need ideas. I'm giving you these ideas, folks. Every now and then, I, I usually drink my coffee black, but if it looks like I'm skipping a meal around midday or one in the afternoon, I may put a little heavy cream in it, right? Just to yeah, get that out. really does help. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing I'll do is um, you get bored late in the day. You know, usually I, I drive 10, 12 hours a day. Um, I find that um, Epic makes the pork rinds. Yeah, you know, I usually buy the ones that are salt and black pepper. Um, they're clean. I know they're not cooked in seed oil. I might munch on some of those. It might take me right. two, two days to go through a bag. I might go through the bag right there. I don't know. Uh, that's another thing I do. Uh, I chop up a lot of cheese before I leave and they go into Ziploc bags. And that usually stays good for a couple of days in the car without getting all sweaty in there and everything um, in the ice chest. Um, but th those are the things I do uh, because there's no real stopping on the road to get anything good to eat. If I see a really good hamburger joint or something's coming up like that, and it's, it's kind of like a family owned type place, not like a McDonald's type thing. I've been known to stop in those places, but not too yeah. often. Um, and of course, I, I stay in mediums type hotels at night, you know, like a, a Marriott or a, yeah, one of those. And usually there's some kind of restaurant, usually a steak I can get at night. Right. Um, somewhere. There's almost always a burger patty you can get from somewhere. Oh, oh, absolutely. Um, That's what yeah. I always stick to. Yeah. But as far as exercise, like I'll use a hotel gym. I have no problem with that, but I just like that feeling of being antsy in the car. I always like, like I'll take my arms and one by one, like put it behind me, just stretch out <laughs> the yeah. armpits and, and like, I'll do a lot of like neck stretches and stuff. Cause I just, I just hate sitting still for that long. Okay. To give you an example of what I do there. So I'm doing car yoga, I guess. <laughs> look, when, when I, when I go up to Brockport, I'm going to drive up in one day. Um, if I want to take a nice long walk or jog or whatever, when I get there, that's one thing. And then, you know, be there two days, I can easily get some exercise in both days. And then on the day driving back, I can do something that morning or when I get home. Um, but when I'm, when I'm on the road to go to say, um, uh, uh Austin, right. I'm going to stay in Memphis or somewhere like that overnight. Right. right. So I'm going to stay in a, a, a medium style hotel. They always have a gym. When I wake up the next morning before I take off, I'm going to go to the gym for an hour. 
You know, mm-hmm. there's going to at least be a treadmill or a rowing machine or a, a not, you know, some kind of option where I can move around for about an hour and really get my blood flowing, have a nice breakfast and then get on the road again. Uh, it's not about just trying to hammer out the road. You know, I'll, I'll take a little time to, to you know, keep my, myself going. And if you're sitting there wondering, if you're that guy going, well, what are you trying to save money? Well, actually, even with gas prices where they are, when I start, if you did look at flights, but I don't care because I'd rather travel, and I'll, I'll explain why in a second, rather travel by car. It's going to be cheaper. I, I figured last night after I looked at 7,000 miles, I looked at the mileage of my car and the whole thing. Um, I'm going to probably spend seventeen, eighteen hundred dollars $1,800 in gas. That's way cheaper than if I took flights to all these places. That's true. Not flights to, right now are outrageous. Flights are outrageous. And then when you get there, I need a car, right? So you got, I got to rent a car or do the Uber thing, which I have no idea how that works. But, you know, I, I would have to rent a car in L.A. and I keep that car for two days because I have to go out to Lone Pine and come back and do this. And that. It, it would yeah. be by the time I got back here on flights, it would be thirty five hundred dollars if it's a penny. Yeah. Right. And you go do what about hotel room? Way the whole thing is way cheaper this way. Yeah. Right. Um, but I'm not looking at that. But also who nobody it's nobody's business how you spend your money. Sorry. Right. But it's che- it's cheaper, it's cheaper to go by car than it is to go by plane. Um, but, but also here- too, even if you even if you're John Madden and you just don't want to go on a plane and you want to go on a car and it costs a little more, who gives a shit? It's your money. You're allowed to spend it how you want. That's all I'm saying. Anna, so get, y'all stop spending other people's money. You know Anna, what I mean? I, no, people I do that though. They no, write no, that no, all the time, and I'm always like, "Why think, are you spending other people's money? Don't do no, that." It, it, no, if anyone's going, are you doing this to save money? No. Although I will be saving money, that's not why. Because usually time is more valuable than money. Um, but here's the deal. I'm becoming more and more like John Madden. Now, the John Madden story, if people don't realize is he was on a, you know, he never liked flying. He was always worried about falling out of the sky and crashing and the whole thing. And he had a really bad flight somewhere. And John Madden used to have to travel all the time. And he said, never again. And that's not my problem. Right. right? Obviously, if I have to go to Europe, I'm getting on a plane. If I have to go anywhere overseas, I'm <laughs> going to take a, a steamship. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not taking a QE2. You know, it's, it's I'm going to get on a plane. Um. And there are times and, you know, when I have to get somewhere and get back, I'll get on a plane. My problem is people. People. I, I, yep. I, I'm having trouble. I, I, I don't know if it's some kind of phobia. Maybe I need to see someone. I don't have the patience for what's going on with people anymore. Um, Call me a curmudgeon. Yeah, of course. You know, everyone calls me Gran Torino online. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Um, when I was watching that show, um, The Ranch, right? Um, the character that's played by um, my hero, Sam Elliott. He's this curmudgeon who hates everyone, right? right. I look at that. I'm hoping I'm not becoming that guy. He <laughs> was like, please don't let me become that guy, right? Because... I, I know my grandfather, who I'm a lot like, could he got to a point in his life he just couldn't deal with any. It, you know, he just he was always alone doing his work. He got a lot done. He couldn't put up with bullshit or people. And I'm getting closer and closer to that. Um, and I didn't really start getting this way until you know, COVID, after COVID. Yeah. Started traveling again because there was a, a long period where I didn't travel. No one did. I, I've i only been to New York back in November, December, and that's it. So this is my first trip other than that trip. So I'm not. So you, you see, you haven't been flying a lot, but I no. still, well, as you know, as you know, when I famously went home during COVID to take care of my mom, I drove home. Right. I had to bring a lot of stuff with me. I just drove home and you know, I drove back and every anywhere I had to go during COVID, I just drove. <clears throat> and then all of a sudden I had to get on a plane to go to LA and I dropped down in Atlanta and I just had trouble. 
I just I, I I tried I tried to overlook it. I tried to look past it. First off, I'll talk about this now. I don't talk about it often. I've talked about it on the show before. I'm sure I have. Um, going through TSA, I get stopped every single time. We've yeah. talked about that, right? Um, probably. And this why happens. Do you, why this do you get, happens, I get stopped because I carry my microphone. But why do you get stopped? I get stopped worldwide. We saw this happen to me in India and in Oslo and you name it, I get stopped. Um, you can, if you think I'm exaggerating, ask Andy Schreiber, who's been around the world with me, ask Serena Scott Thomas, ask anyone who travels with me. They go through, they don't even look back. They go through, they get their belts and shoes back on, and they just sit on the bench because they know I'm going to be a while. Um, Why? Why do you get stopped? And as it turns out, <clears throat> good friend, and she listens to the show. Uh, she was number two in line behind Janet Napolitano when she was, you know, head of Homeland Security. This woman, okay. Janet. And I said to her one day, I told her what was happening. And I said, I said, of course, I'm paranoid about it. But I said, one day, I noticed that I was in one of those turnstiles at LAX where I'm way deep in the turnstile. You mean you mean the 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 snake the snake line yeah, yeah like people like people queuing up cat, for security the, cat, the cattle queue you know? yeah yeah mm -hmm. and I'm not all the way at the back I'm I'm and TSA guy came up to me he goes how you doing sir I went hey it was great he goes um hey you might come in with me and I was like okay and I, I go and he goes can you hold your hands out I went okay and he did the swipe both hands and uh I went everything okay he goes yeah we just pull them out of line every now and then and check them. And uh, we're checking you. Uh, okay, good. And Do they think you have a bomb? I asked my friend, <clears throat> and she said, "Yes, you are on a list." And yes, they they know you're coming before you're even at the airport. There's you whenever you, there's a red flag that goes. What? Up. Yeah, they 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 know why. And I asked, I said, "How did I get on the list?" She goes, "No rhyme or reason. Um, it, it could have been." Um, it, it could have been one day where um, um, you took a, a, a one way flight or something. She goes, anything could have triggered that during the early days. This started happening to me about a year or two after 9-11. And of course, at first I was like, OK, I never shave. I have dark skin. I could look like a terrorist. Right. And, and, I, and no I, matter I how much they say they're not racially profiling, they racially profile. I, I, I'm, I, so I, I went with that. I went, OK, obviously, I, I look like a terrorist terrorist. I get that. <laughs> right. Um, and, um, she said, yeah, somehow you ended up on a list and she goes, you can get off of that list, but she goes, it's very difficult. And you would have to go talk to this person and go to that and blah, blah, probably have to go to Washington. There's ways to get off the list. So I've never cared to get off. What I do know is every time I go through TSA folks, if you want to know what it feels like to, to get it every single time, and then it got worse. Because number one, they know I'm coming through. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the first person you see it with, because there's some number somewhere on your ticket or something that's happening, where you know they flag it for the person checking your right boarding there, pass or whatever. She told me that there's some there, there's a way they know, and you know the first person you see where you have to show them, you know the TSA person where you have the to ID show them, and the boarding the pass, ID yeah. and the board, boarding pass. You know, like I, I've watched Tallulah, Serena, I've watched other people in front of me go through. They barely look up. They might say, uh, take your hat off and, you know, you take you lift your hat up for a second, put your hat back on. Oh, to show that you match your ID picture. Right. They'll say, uh, can you take your glasses off, take your hat off. You know, they might do that. Right. To, you know, but usually they're, they're barely looking up at people and they're just ching, 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 ching. When I come through, it's they look, they look at this, they look at me, they look back down, they'll look up again. They'll say, can you hang on a second? They'll walk away. They'll come back. They, they don't say why they're walking. They'll come back. Someone else will come back, sign off, and then let me go. So that mm. that's another thing that happens. Um, but then it got really, really bad because I have a lot of scar tissue in the shoulder. Right. So when you go through a thing and you lift your arms up, you see a big mass underneath. It looks like I'm carrying something. <laughs> when, then, when it's really your false shoulder. Yeah, well, is that and other stuff that they had to leave in? It's messed right. up. 
And this is the part it's going to sound funny, but it's not funny. Once Guam hit a certain size, it looked like I was carrying something in my pants. Oh, Vinny, we have not discussed this. No, we, we've never talked about it. And that's when it started becoming, sir, can we take you behind the curtain? And I would just say to him, no, do it right here. Do it right here. Thank you. And I'll hold my hands out. Of course, I got to get a guy to come over. And the guys, I'm standing there, sir, I'm going to use the back of my hand. I'm not using the palm of my hand. You can watch what I'm doing, but we have, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then sometimes they'll say, um, we still can't detect what it is. We have to go behind the curtain. This was every time I traveled, Anna. That's but, awful. You know, I, and of course, I would always jokingly think of the scene in uh, uh, um, Spinal Tap when he's got the cucumber in his pants. Right. But this is, it's embarrassing. Yeah, it, it's overboard. It's overreaching. It's when I, I would even tell them before we, they would take me behind the curtains. Listen, I have a large mass on one of my testicles. They didn't care. And, right. And the one time. Uh, for people that don't know this, I shoot shotguns competitively, so we load a lot of ammo. Um, one of my pieces of luggage, you know, that I probably carry to a, a gun range one time or, you know, when I was out doing that. You know, when you load a lot, you know, you have TNT on your hands. It can end up on the hand. They found TNT on on a piece of luggage once. Oh, God. Well, that's probably why you're on the list. No, no. This is way after I was on. The oh, list. OK. I'm on the list. And now they're finding something on my bag. Oh, God. I almost missed a flight Jeez. that day. I was like, hey, can, can I call my wife? She's she's at the gate. You know, can no, no, uh, you have to stay here. You can't use your cell phone. You can't do anything. No calling, no nothing. They, they, they detained me. That they, they, they thought, sure, they had terrorists right there, right? So this is every time I go to the airport. This I is hope that we find out that you're, you're actually a spy. Like, we're going to find this out. Yeah, yeah. He was I hope that, like, all will be revealed. His so front was that he he went so far with this ruse to make to three movies. movies. Yeah, <laughs> and a book. And yeah. a book and be a fit. He's in, very in shape, but he had to be in shape. He had to catch all the bad guys. Well, uh, according to my friend, the fact that I'm an older guy who's very fit, that's another, you know, she goes, you're coming through, old guy, really fit. She goes, you fit every profile that they're looking for. Every profile, right? When you look like Rambo, <laughs> like this old guy that might have been in the service, they're looking at they, they're looking they're looking at you. Wow. Yeah. So there's that, right? So by the time I get past that is that, so weird though. As much as I keep myself calm and I get through that, I don't get it's mad annoying. at anyone, and I I thank everyone at TSA. Thank you. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Thank. In my mind, I'm hurting because yeah, this has been going on for 20 something years. Yeah. Now I get it. People lost family members in 9-11. You guys are going through a lot more than me, but 20 something years. Yeah. I'm treated like a criminal when I travel. Right. And then I get through. I would drive too. I get when I get through that. Now I'm with society and everyone and everyone, everyone, everyone like this uh, uh, in the phone. Oh, look, there's a phone. Oh, look. Oh, oh, I gotta take a picture of myself. Oh, wait, now I gotta do that. I got an app. 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 I, everyone is in this this thing, this thing right here. Right. No one's looking up. No one gives a shit. After 9 11, you know, the way people, I, I was walking through an airport. I, I, I said this on the Adam Carolla show. I was going there to do a show. I said, you know, I think I was the only person traveling that had on a shirt that had buttons. <laughs> well, that's true. An actual pair of shoes. Actually, I had boots on, probably cowboy boots or something, but an actual pair of leather shoes and a belt. I don't think anyone else I was traveling with had those three items. Oh, the thing that gets me is the amount of open toed flip flop, like where I have to see grown men's feet. And I'm sorry. I'm not into body shaming, but feet, we can still body shame feet. I don't need to see any grown man's feet. None of them. None of y'all need to see. I don't need to see your feet. You don't need to see my feet. We don't have to do it. We can wear shoes 
where our feet are covered. And then I think to myself, you're so you're in such close quarters. You could get your feet stepped on. You could get kicked. You could drop the luggage on your feet. You could hurt your feet. Like Anna, it's like a, a chef doesn't cook with open toed shoes I in the kitchen. Cause you could agree. drop a knife on your feet. Oh, I couldn't agree more. Um, the guys that are wearing the shoes that look like they're going surfing, you know, it's like, are you getting on a plane or are you going to surf? Dirty feet. So you have to and, ask and going to New York City with the open toed shoes. I'm like, what are you going to do? You're going to get so much human fecal matter all over your feet oh, <laughs> walking in the streets please. of New York City. But uh, Anna, uh, just all of it, dudes, I don't want to see your feet. If you're wearing shit that you would wear when you're painting your house, do not wear it to the airport. <laughs> do not. Uh, if, if, if your shirt has holes in it, I don't care if it's meant to have holes in it because it's ironic or something. Wear a fucking proper shirt. I'm the guy they're stopping because I, I'm the guy with, with the button down shirt with the, the, you know, the, the belt and the shirt. I'm the guy they're stopping. Right. Right. They're letting everybody that looks like the Spicoli going through TSA, it, they, they just walk right through. All right. Now, now, ladies, I don't care how cute you think your fucking toes are. I don't want to see your little puffy slippers in the airport. Slippers are made for around the house. They're not made for airports. I'm sorry. And, and and the fact that I, you guys on the late flights in the evening coming out of L.A. wearing pajamas on the flight. No, no, I don't want to see what you wear at home. Anna, I was, you know, as you know, I'm a hat guy. You, I have a lot. I have a don't lot. Don't have to hats. tell me. I wear hats all the time. Like your husband, I'll wear the little beanies, the little Baker Boy beanies, mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, you know, caps because I, I'm bald on top. I, I have cowboy style hats and, all, you know, felt hats and the whole thing. I have a hat called the Strata Liner. Do you know what that is? Mm-mm. A strata liner was made by um, Stetson, the hat okay. company. It's a fedora of sort. You know, it, it's it. under. It's not their cowboy set. It's under their fedora line. You have to come here to KT Murphy's, and KT will make you a custom Stetson. Really? Yeah, he's amazing. I, I have a here custom. Let me let me put it this way: yeah, like I, you want the two folds, you want the one fold, you want the thing. Yeah, you want I, the, I, I have very, I have very specific stuff, but I had a custom. Cowboy style hat. Tallulah used it and said she gave it back to me. She had two of my hats. She had a black one and, and a white one, both gone. But she claimed <laughs> she gave them back to me. I, I said, at any rate, um, the Strata Liner was a hat because there was a plane called the Strata Liner, right? Way back when in the 50s. This was a hat when people wore suits and right. hats on planes. Right. We'll dress up to travel. Yeah. The, the, this is the, the traveling fedora. Right. <laughs> We've gone so far away from that now that we can't even get anywhere near that. Like, I've, I've always thought about ironically wearing a three piece suit in a strata <laughs> liner with, you know, lace up shoes and everything on a plane. You, you would get singled out by TSA. Oh, like, oh yeah. They would just kick me off. They go, no, something wrong here. You're, you're yeah. done. Just get off. Just get off the plane. No, I remember seeing and, and listen again. I want I feel like I want people to wear whatever they want to wear. No, however, I I, you and I are wrong. We, I, we, we, but we, practicality we, speaking, I'm like, do you know how many germs we're up against with each other? And you don't you're barely wearing any clothes or shoes. I saw a lady at Burbank Airport and she just had the red bra. And then a little like short shorts. <sighs> And I was like, you're adorable and super cute. And you should wear that out in Vegas tonight, but change into it when you get to Vegas. Yeah. Don't wear that at the airport. And also too, you can't account for the temperature of an airplane. You're going to wear that. You're going to free it because undoubtedly it'll be freezing cold on the plane. The moment you get, in the, you get on the plane, it's 150 degrees. And then you get in the air and magically it's 45 degrees on that plane. And you're going to wear this thing. And I just like, I, I, for me, I imagine the germs all over her body. And I think to myself, she must not have OCD and what a free and wonderful life her brain must have. God bless. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and I don't think that way. I go, oh my God, honey, don't you, be careful. You're going to get gross, but some do, I don't know. I just don't, I don't want strange men germs on you. You know? Well, when, when you start talking about that, every well, let's time, protect us from that stuff. Every time you go to the bathroom on a plane, you know, the floor is covered in pee. It, you know, whenever you, you take a step in there, 
if you can't take a step, you, you, your feet are like, <laughs> <laughs> like you're in the communal shower at the camp. Well, it, it feels like, like they're stuck to the floor. Like there's some kind of, you know, fly glue on the floor or something gross. And, and then you'll see but the you, ladies room is no better, by the way, you'll see they're peeing all over the seats. No, I'm talking about on the plane. I'm talking oh. about the, on the plane. So there's pee all over the place. The floors are nasty and the whole thing. People, everyone who's walked in there has walked all over airports all day long and the whole thing. People will get up barefooted or in their, or in their, their socks and walk into their bathroom. It's like, this cannot be the only bad decision you've made today. Right. Yeah. And you see, I live in a world and again, call me a curmudgeon. I live in a world and I'm looking at that going, people, come on, come on. Really? You go into the bathroom and you're stocking feet. What what the F are you doing? What are you thinking? What do you think? So I didn't want to have any of that this summer, <laughs> knowing that I had to travel. So what I'm doing is I'm just driving. I'm just going to be alone and I'm going to drive. And that's why I'm doing it. Tell us all about Villa Capelli, Anna. Um, Villa Capelli is the best olive oil on the planet. And then I want to get to what do what time is it? Do we have time for one more quick fitness question after Villa sure, Capelli? Sure. Okay. Villa Capelli is the best olive oil on the planet. And yesterday for my IG live, I took Villa Capelli and I rolled it all over some butternut squash slices. I, I taught the folks how to deal with the butternut squash. I rolled and then I dusted the dill over some of them and I dusted the barbecues because it helps the stuff stick to it. And then when you roast it in the oven, it was so good. Villa Capelli is the base of pretty much every recipe I make that involves olive oil has Villa Capelli in it, whether it's a marinade, a salad dressing, which marinades and salad dressings are basically the same, you guys. Um, whether you're frying, if you're pan frying some chicken, you're pan frying a, a, a steak that doesn't have a lot of fat, I'll actually start the pan with the Villa Capelli to get the steak going. Um, I, I even will do it with grass-fed ground beef because it doesn't give off enough fat. So I'll yeah. start with that. Um, it's the best olive oil on the planet. If you want to get some, and you should get the three liter tin, go to villacapelli.com, enter the discount code Vinny, V-I-N-N-I-E. You'll get 10% off your order each and every time you order. Stephen Crutchfield is still doing a bang up job running that company since Paul passed away a couple of years ago. And um, we want to keep him doing that because if Villa Capelli doesn't continue to run, I'll be, <laughs> I don't know what I'll do. I'll freak out, Vin. Yeah. They, we, I use their oil in my sauces and Vinny uses it in his vitamin D and um, it's just we, we're Villa Capelli is the ones that we trust and that we've been talking about them on the air long before they ever became a sponsor, but go get some Villa Capelli olive oil. Don't forget the discount code Vinny V I N N I E. And uh, you'll be very happy that you got it. Yeah. So go check it out. Uh, let's, let's do one more. Anna, and then we got Quick a question. Rock. James asks on Twitter, Hey, Vinny, could you do an episode where you discuss your top recommended vitamins or supplements and why I'm starting to get calf cramps while sleeping too often? Oh, OK, I think he transposed his words. I think what he meant to say is I'm starting to get calf cramps too often while sleeping. That right. makes more sense. Forgive okay. me if you've done this one already. I have been busy not listening as regularly as I like. Well, we're going to dress you down for not listening regularly. I'm just kidding. We're not. Okay. I think we answered this and a lot of other people came in and started singing the praises of oh, my result and all that. But on um, on Twitter? On Twitter, but yeah, I okay. want to do it. Anyway. I didn't see um, the response. So because the first part of this question was vitamins. So vitamins will not do, you know, there are 13 essential vitamins. Um, what does that mean? Uh that means that it's essential that you take them because your body won't make them, right? Our bodies will make a lot of the nutrients we need um, if we don't get them, you know, like, um, uh, but vitamin A, all the Bs, C, uh, D, E, um, you got your K, your body won't make those. That's 13 of those. Um, and as we always say about vegans, vitamin B12, the only place that you could get B12 is from red meat or mm. muscle meat from an animal. Um, so you couldn't actually be a vegan <clears throat> before we had exogenous vitamins. So vitamins won't do anything to take care of cramps. Why should anyone take multivitamins? Um, full disclosure for anyone who doesn't know this, I own a vitamin company. This is not a sales pitch. Um, you can go take anyone's vitamins. I don't care. Or don't take them at all. If you're eating a proper diet, um, you don't need vitamins. 
why take vitamins? Well, because of the world we live in today, with with all of the, you know, everything that's going on, um, stress levels can affect vitamins. Um, uh, the crap they, you know, they spray on foods, vegetables and everything else can affect uh, the absorption of vitamins in your body. And for that reason, I feel like it's a good idea to take a multivitamin every day. Your body won't need all of the nutrients of the 13 essential vitamins, but it's an insurance program, right? You, you're getting what you need that day if you don't get it anywhere else. So that's why it's good to take a multivitamin. Otherwise, no real need. Um, most people, if, if look, my company, as you know, we don't make every vitamin out there. We're not like Solgar and some of these companies that make right. thousands every and thousands single. of products, right? I make the stuff that I feel that's important. Jaro. Um, yeah, Jaro. And I see them companies. everywhere. Oh, yeah, they make, you know, oh, there's companies that make everything because, you know, they're, they're, they're just throwing crap at the wall. I'm looking around and going, okay, what's worth it to take? On top of taking vitamin D uh, in a supplement, we don't get enough vitamin D. Most doctors will tell you, we see studies after studies now where a lot of the, the disease that's coming on pike is because people don't have enough vitamin D. Uh, and it's for a myriad of reasons, right? So I make a vitamin D because that's important. Do you have to take vitamin D? Well, Go see your doctor. A lot of times, uh, if you're in the Midwest or somewhere where there's hard winters, if you're up in North Dakota, like Kurt Beard, uh, you might want to take some extra vitamin D. I take vitamin D year round um, on top of being in the sun a lot. Um, whenever I go and get my blood work done, I always have them check me for D and I'm always right where I need to be. Um, your results may vary. Ask your doctor to give you a, a vitamin B, B test. Uh, some people don't absorb vitamin B12 through their small intestine, no matter how much red meat you eat. As you get older, I'm one too. Um, turns out I eat more red meat than anyone I know. Or maybe I, know, I eat a lot of red meat. And my small intestine does not absorb the vitamin B12. All you have to do is put a, a tab under your tongue. So that's why we make the sublingual vitamin B12. If you if you took vitamin B12 through your mouth, the same thing that will happen, which is what happens when you eat red meat, it won't get absorbed. You need to get it in sublingually. Um, so we make that. Uh, it turns out no one gets enough magnesium anymore. Uh, yeah. This is one of the ones that will help you with your- cramp. I was going to say, shouldn't he take your magnesium or- uh, everyone magnesium, came, but everyone I'm, came I'm recommending of, your magnesium. Well, yeah, well, well, uh, well, there's a reason why mine, you know, we put it's a broad spectrum, we put four different magnesiums in there. So uh, they're all working on, on different aspects of the magnesium you need, and you won't get the shits unless you take an absorbent amount of it. But well, I don't recommend you do that. A lot of people, you know, said, Hey, if you're having cramps, just take Vinny's magnesium at night. By the way, you could take any magnesium, you could take citrate, uh, uh, picolinate, you could take uh, uh, any of the different sorts of uh, carbonate, malate, there's a bunch of different magnesiums you can take. Um, and they will all work. Some of them will give you stomach distress if you take the wrong amount or too much. So you have to be careful with that. Usually citrate and carbonate is well tolerated. And if you don't take mine, you can find those in a grocery store and they'll work just fine. Uh, you can get that. That will help with cramps at night. I also suggest taking it at night because it naturally helps relax you and you'll get better sleep. Uh, sleep Agreed. is very important. Um, and my ultra salt has magnesium in it. It has um, a high mineral salt. You know, we use Redmond's real salt in there and there's all the other stuff, manganese and, and, um, um, Manganese, and, and I'm just losing my mind right now. Um, I was gonna ask you about the ultra salt because I used to think that the ultra salt was only like if you were an athlete, but now I yeah. like to take it after every walk I do. I take an ultra salt and gulp some water down, especially when it's hot outside. And yeah. it just, I just, I will say it like reduces like getting headaches during the day. Oh, oh, absolutely, it does. Um, so Gina it's got to help cramps at night, too. Mammoth, and um you know, she went up to altitude for a couple of days with her husband, and they started getting headaches. And she goes, what's doing? I said, drink a lot of water. Do you have my ultra salt? Yes, we do. 
boom, problem solved. No medication needed. Headaches gone. It's, uh, so, it's like the 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 jack of all trades in the in the medicine cabinet. I love that ultrasound. It, so it, much. it truly is. It, it really is. So um, those are ways you can do it. Um, and uh, of course, when you're taking magnesium and ultrasalt and all that kind of stuff, by the way, <clears throat> there's a little known trick people, you know, people in the ultra community know it uh, pickles in the brine pickle brine um, will also alleviate cramps at night. So if you get some pickles without sugar in them, you know, take a little bit of how much of the brine, Vinny, I don't know, an ounce, you know, you don't have to take a ton of it, eat a pickle, that kind of thing. It'll take care of the problem. By the way, in Brooklyn, in this particular dive bar in Brooklyn, they claim to have invented the pickleback, which is when you're drinking at night between every drink, you have a shot of pickle juice and they swear you won't be hung over the next day. To a degree, if you're over drinking, you're going to still be hung over. But yeah, it, Listen, it kind these of, Brooklyn it people will say anything. Yeah. Hey, maniacs. take a pickle back. OK, just to yeah. take a shot of pickle back. Yeah. Um, as they wax their mustaches on their yeah. unicycles. That's what they do in Brooklyn. I guess. I don't know. My daughter lives there. Um, so, Anna. Yeah. You have uh, this new sauce out. You sent some to me. I sure did. Oh, boy. Wow. Did it arrive? Oh, yes, it did. And it's Good. Uh, uh, most of it is consumed. I have one left. <laughs> you need more already? Uh, uh, I don't. I, I, I might be able to send you another twin pack, but we don't have the, uh, that much. I will buy some, Anna. I, I, I got it. You don't need to buy it. You, you get know. it for free. No, Anna, I ain't taking it for free. I'm buying it. Do not send me any. I'm buying it. I'll send some to um, Mari then. Can, can I tell you this? Yeah. You knocked it out of the ballpark because you know I like spicy, right? Yeah, I know. Yeah. And it's not overly spicy. Right. You freaking knocked it out of the ballpark. And I, I'm going to go ahead and say this is your best yet. You, you've not. Stop it. No, this is, this is what sauce needs to have. <laughs> Well, listen, if it's popular, I'll consider making it as one of the regular selections. But if it doesn't like it, it's one of those things where it needs to sell quickly. But if it doesn't sell quickly, then I know it's not going to be like a regular thing. But that's OK. I'll do it as a limited edition, you know, once every other year or something. It ought to be at uh, Anna. It's I, on the third one because Serena's, you know, I'm taking her to the airport tonight. Um, she'll be gone for a while. I'm going to make my triple protein crime with the last one. Yeah. Yeah, I'm making a chicken parm with it tonight. Yeah, that's stuff yeah. just overboard. It's really um, good. It's so, really good. Yeah, well, thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Yeah, go to eathappykitchen.com and get yourself some sauces. Our marinara is back in stock, by the way, the regular marinara. So if you don't like spicy, marinara is back in stock. Eat Happy Kitchen. I saw where my buddy Tim Malian uh, is taking up my thing of putting sprinkling the uh, the dust onto his eggs. Did you see that? Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, it goes great. I, I took the hard boiled eggs and I turned it into um, what do you what do you call it? The deviled eggs, mm. with the yeah. dill deviled eggs. They were really good. Um, I just want you to know I got a text, a spam text, and it says, Anna, they know my name. Do this for four weeks to burn 44 pounds. Julio, oh, what is it? Let's I don't know. Do you think I should click the link? Is it or is it going to install a virus on my computer? No, I don't know. But oh, I click the link. It's myworkoutfriend.com. Oh, don't give them how me. how one cup of this secret mineral before bed that burns belly fat like crazy discovered by Harvard medical student. And I want to have this on next Monday show. Can you have this for next Monday? <laughs> yes, I will. I'll leave the I thing wanna, open. Yeah. 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 Keep keep that there. I want to see it. Put it, you know, copy it and put you it guys. In. I get that. That was literally a spam text that just came through it at, at one minute ago. Yeah, we, we need to we need to discover what this is on the I next. I feel round. honored. Thank you, spammers. I don't know what I would do without you guys. Um, you know what to do with me. We all go shopping on Amazon. Before you go to Amazon, go to vinnytartaries.com, click through the banner. It puts coal on the fire and it gets my train down the track. Please bookmark it and use it every time. Also, we need five star reviews. I'm told that we're supposed to say that more often. So <laughs> if you guys haven't given us a five star review, wherever you listen to podcasts, please go and do that. Um, especially. Yeah, that's right. We're supposed to be trying to beat Sanjay Gupta's 
podcast yeah. numbers. So we can't and, beat Sanjay Gupta unless you yeah. guys all come together. So listen, we they, all we all need to have a common enemy, and that enemy is Sanjay Gupta. Yeah, why not? <laughs> why not? Why not? Oh God! So you know what to do. He's um, gonna sue us. We also have a super fan page. Blah blah blah. Okay, Anna, I'm gonna cut yeah. off this because I have two songs that you reminded me of during the show. Oh boy. Do you have any idea what they might be? Spice Girls. And it, that's one of them, right? No. Oh, there's two of them. That's all I could think of. OK, well, folks, if you want to hear if you're watching this on video, you're going to have to go to uh, the, you know, wherever you listen to podcasts, to get the rest of so it.